Hello, fourth grade. Coming to you with a screencastify for today's story, The Princess and the Pizza. So just like the dragon problem, it's also a fairy tale. And our essential question is still the same. Where do good ideas come from? So in the dragon problem, Liang gets really creative with solving the problem of getting rid of a dragon. So similarly, we're going to read about how a princess gets out of a difficult situation. Okay, so with that, we'll get started. Um, just a side note, I don't know if you have figured this out yet, but if you push this button, it will read the book to you. So whenever um, you are not in one of my live lessons and you have to read a story to yourself, if you get tired of reading the tiny print here, like I do sometimes, you can just choose to listen to it instead. All right, let's get started. Princess Paulina needed a job. Her father had given up his throne to become a woodcarver and moved them to a humble shack in a neighboring kingdom. Since the king was still learning, his carvings didn't sell, and Paulina's garden barely kept enough on the table. Paulina missed princessing. She missed walking the peacock in the royal garden, surveying the kingdom from the castle tower, and doing the princess wave in royal processions. Paulina tried walking a stray chicken around her shack, but it only pecked at her bare toes. Ouch. Surveying the kingdom from the shack's leaky roof made even more holes. She tried princess waving to the townspeople from her father's cart, but nobody bothered to wave back. They just thought she was swatting at flies. So we have a princess here who's trying to get used to living a normal lifestyle instead of living the royal lifestyle. I'm sure they can't be easy. One day, a page rode past the shack. A page is like a messenger announcing the, that Queen Zelda of Blom was seeking a true princess to become the bride of her son, Prince Drupert. That's a terrible name. This is my chance to get back to princessing, Paulina cried. She rummaged through her trunk of ex-princess stuff, brushed the wood shavings from her best ball gown, and blew away the bits of sawdust that clung to her diamond tiara. Then she tucked a piece of garlic into her bodice for good luck. Huh, I didn't know that was good luck. Snipped some fragrant herbs to cover up the garlic smell and headed for the castle. Paulina didn't expect much competition. There wasn't another princess for hundreds of miles. But when she got to Blom Castle, Paulina found she was only one of 12 princesses hoping to become the royal bride. Okay, so here we have a little text box. Make predictions. How does Paulina feel about her chances of winning the competition? Use text clues to make a prediction. Hmm. Well, I think she was thinking that she wasn't going to have competition, but turns out there's 12 other princesses. So using text clues, hmm, maybe because she didn't expect competition, but then found out there was, maybe she's not sure yet. When she looked into her assigned room, Paulina saw her bed piled with 16 mattresses. Oh, for Pete's sake, the old princess and the pea trick. That's so once upon a time. Naturally, Paulina didn't sleep all night because she felt the lumpy pea through all the mattresses. When the twelve princesses gathered in the throne room the next morning, the seven who looked bright-eyed were sent home. Now only Paulina and four other sleepy princesses remained. First, they were made to write essays entitled, Why I Want to Have the Gracious and Exquisitely Beautiful Queen Zelda for My Mother-in-Law. Oh my goodness. So gracious kind of means um, she's someone who's generous. It can mean generous or someone who's graceful. Prince Drupert and Queen Zelda finally appeared on the balcony. Queen Zelda did all the talking. Congratulations, ladies. You have written some lovely essays, which I will keep in my scrapbook. 
and you have passed all past the mattress test, but to make absolutely sure you are of royal blood, there is a second test. Only a true princess can wear these glass slippers. For Pete's sake, you never heard of sneakers? Paulina asked. Queen Zelda gave Paulina a sharp look. Nobody said you had to hike in them, just try them on. After the royal page made his way around the room with the slippers, two big-footed princesses were sent home. Now only Paulina and two others remained. One was followed around by seven strange little men. And the other had such a long braid dragging behind her, Paulina kept tripping over it. So I'm kind of actually seeing some references to other fairy tales. So the glass slippers... It's totally a Cinderella thing. And then being followed around by seven strange little men. That's a Snow White reference. And the other had a long braid. That's kind of like Rapunzel. For Pete's sake, you never heard of scissors, Paulina cried. Queen Zelda glared at Paulina. You all have passed the second princess test. Your final task is to cook a feast that proves you worthy of being my dear Drupert's wife. This set up a wail among the princesses, especially Paulina. For Pete's sake, you have no royal chef. Silence, said the queen. The table holds the makings for three fine feasts. Choose well, for the winner will become my dear Drupert's bride. As Paulina started for the table, the long-haired princess tripped her, then loaded up with food. By the time Paulina got there, the seven strange little men had run off with everything but some flour, yeast, water, three overripe tomatoes, and a hunk of stale cheese. So that means it was old. That's not fair. Queen Zelda, will you help me? No, said the queen, because you have a big mouth. I'm guessing this is Queen Zelda. There's Rapunzel. There's Snow White. A servant escorted Paulina to her room and locked the door. Hey, how can I cook without a bowl or spoons or pots? There was no reply. Paulina tried to make bread, kneading the flour, water, and yeast together, but it only stuck to the tray in a flattened mess. She squished the tomatoes over the dough to brighten it up. It looked awful. She sprinkled cheese gratings over the top. It was still a mess, and Paulina was exhausted. It's starting to sound like pizza. For Pete's sake, where's your fairy godmother You when you need her? I'm going to take a nap. She reached under the pile mattresses, pulled out the offending pea, and climbed into bed. She hadn't been sleeping long since there was a knock at the door. Only 20 minutes left, called Queen Zelda. I don't smell anything cooking. I'm not cooking, said Paulina. I'm napping. Then I'm going home. You're not going anywhere, said the queen. The losers will be beheaded. Well, that sounds awful. Paulina sat bolt upright. Beheaded? You didn't tell us that. I forgot, said the queen. Can't I have a second chance? How about I try to spin straw into gold? Or maybe I could guess a weird little man's name? No second chances, declared the queen. But that's not fair, Paulina cried. Who needs to be fair? I'm the queen. Spoken like a queen. Paulina leapt out of bed and ran to the window. But it was an unbelievably long drop to the ground. The meal was her only hope. She rushed the tray to over to the fireplace, stirred the few remaining hot coals, then crushed her garlic and sprinkled it over the mess for good luck. Finally, Paulina tossed on the herbs to cover up the garlic smell. Hmm. Paulina paced back and forth, planning her escape. Perhaps she could make a deal with the long-haired princess to climb down her braid. She didn't notice that the goopy dough had browned into a crust. The tomatoes were bubbling, the hard bits of cheese had melted, and the fragrance of garlic and herbs filled the room. Looks delicious. A page opened the door. Time's up. 
Paulina took a deep breath and carried her tray into the great dining room. Hmm. So just when she's thinking about trying to get out of there and escape, it looks like things are going to work out for her. Let's see. The other princesses had made lovely feasts, especially the one who had seven strange little men to help her. Prince Drupert went right to Paulina's tray. It's not pretty, but it smells scrumptious. It just means that it smells tasty. He helped himself to an unusually generous piece. What do you call this dish? Paulina shrugged. I don't know. It can't be an official entry in the contest if it doesn't have a name, said the queen. So official just means it has to be, you know, important. Oh, for Pete's sake, Paulina muttered. What's that? snapped the queen. Pete's what? Remembering the beheading threat, Paulina frantically, so she's panicking, tried to think of a name. It's Pete's, uh... Oh, got a name. Pizza? The queen took a big bite. Odd name, but it's tasty. The winner is Paulina's Pizza. You mean I will be beheaded? I was only kidding about the beheading, said the queen. There. Then I was only kidding about wanting to marry Prince Drupert. Who needs him? I have other plans. Will you leave your recipe? asked the queen. No way, said Paulina. It's just become a family secret. She headed for the door. I liked you best, whined the queen, falling close behind. Oh, for Pete's sake, muttered Paulina as she stomped across the drawbridge. Princess Paulina's Pizza Palace opened a few weeks later. It featured unusual carved furniture and 50 kinds of pizza. Every Thursday, on the royal chef's night off, Queen Zelda and Prince Drupert came to Paulina's for popcorn pineapple pizza. Gross. They often stayed to play cards with Paulina's father. From then on, whenever Paulina drove her pizza delivery cart through town, doing the princess wave, Everybody waved back and ran after asking about the day's specials. Life was good. Paulina was grateful not to have Queen Zelda for her mother-in-law, but she still worried about one little thing. She worried about getting Queen Zelda as her stepmother. Uh-oh. So I can make a prediction that this must be Paulina's dad. Oh my so that's the end of the story. So we have a princess who invented pizza. Okay, so make sure you answer the reading comprehensions about the princess and the pizza. I'm mostly just focusing on story elements. So remember who your characters are. Remember that a plot is the problem and solution. And also remember, um, oh, that's next week's story, sorry. And also remember about sequencing the order of events. And that is it for today's lesson.